uh, Tunza is a not-for-profit organization that uses sports to elevate the livelihood of, of children in underprivileged um, areas, especially the rural areas. And this is by mostly focusing on making sure they go to school, they have education and um, uh, sports is a good driving factor that raises their awareness because everyone loves sports. So we, I, I thought that would be a good vehicle to use. And also my network of friends is 99% sports. So we use uh, sports really for the aim of improving the livelihood of those in um, rural villages. Personally, um, I went through a hard time when I was growing up as a girl, uh, when it came to sanitary solutions. And uh, we lived in an era where it was difficult to discuss with your parents what, what you need and, and stuff like that. And then as I grew up, um, when I was playing for my clubs, I had younger people coming to, to the club who would ask me to help them secure sanitary towels. And um, I know if they listen to this, they'll, they know themselves. And so over time, it was always in my mind. And then um, I came to the US and, and I, it was not an issue with the kids I was coaching, like never an issue. So the, the disparity was really bothering me. And just when we started Tunza, it came back to, to light when some of our kids were missing, you know, practice because of these issues. Uh, during the COVID-19 now is when I said that we need to do something because to make sure it doesn't trickle down to the girls at Tunza, we want to make sure it's not a problem and they don't go that route. There's no excuse. Uh, that's when I said, you know, bring, put up a team together and raise enough sanitary towels so we can always supply our girls and anyone close to us who's having going through the same problem uh, with this. And we couldn't afford it. So we said, you know, ask the public to help. So that's how it came into being. Uh, it's, 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 been a, it's been a nice drive, uh, going down to the people, uh, meeting different people and uh, they give you the parts they have. I think I, I loved that. Uh, someone just calls you, uh, the people we don't even know, we've never met before. And they just call and, and, and the message is, uh, we have some parts here, can you come for them or how do we deliver them? To me that was fun, that was lovely and uh, just shows how people really have us in mind how people really want to care for these girls. And I loved the pictures, you know, those posters on Facebook and everyone calling, hey, can you, can I share my picture so that uh, you make a poster for me and then I'll share it with my friends. I, I loved that so much. The best part of the drive, I think I'll break it into two. Firstly was the planning part of the drive, when you come up with ideas on how you make the drive to be successful. And that was, at least mostly me and Bridget, we helped with the planning of the part. And then when the last part of it is when now people are given, I was so impressed. Like I did not expect that someone, a stranger will just call you like I've seen a post somewhere and I want to give in out of a good cause. And considering the Corona times, the giving that we have received, to me it's very impressive and I'm humbled by it way above successful because uh -huh. the drive is not even over it's over but it's not over people yeah, are still yeah. asking we just did small we social media calling friends um pauline and team did an amazing job and it's the regular it's the your regular person who did extraordinary work the ordinary people they just did extraordinary and it came through for us the physical donation of parts was huge and so because we didn't know where to start and ending like this it was a thousand percent huge success. Implementing the drive itself, to me that was the hardest part of it because now after you have planned, you have to make sure it's a success and waiting, you have to wait because when we started, people didn't start donating in the first two or three days and personally I was scared, like maybe it won't be a success. And then now people started donating, people started sharing, so, and also moving around, collecting the physical parts, it was hard. We have two girls about academic girls, the ones that we have been picking from Isulu, Mombasa, Kwale. And uh, 
since most of them are needy, they are going to benefit from this. And we also appreciate because now they won't be missing. We find that some of them are missing schools because they do not have parts. They would rather stay at home during their menstrual periods and then go to school when it's over. But now they can go to school during these times and it will also improve their academics. Our girls will be, will be covered well uh, with uh, whatever we have received so far. And we believe uh, our whole year will have enough to give the girls. Yeah, so target achieved, though we are still asking for people. If you have pads somewhere, please, we are not really shutting down the drive. If someone feels like they want to donate next week, next month, next year, we are still open. We'll come for the pads. It was actually an idea we thought about ourselves in the beginning, but we were scared because, wait, what if you get just 10? <laughs> you know, we don't want to make promises that we can keep, but yeah. giving right now, right now, we've already given uh, the, our girls who are going to form two, form one, up to class six, and mm -hmm. we just have so much plenty left. I mean, I don't see the point of keeping those for another six months. Tunza is always structured. Is we, we believe in impact and we believe in follow up. We, we wouldn't just go somewhere and just distribute. I mean, we, we target groups and and it's something that we can jump into right off after this drive, but it's a very good idea. Uh, we can take the burden of collecting and running a drive and, and you no, know, we, we do it per year, we, we do it all year, you know, open a, a center where people just bring in and then we distribute. I mean, the public trusts us to do what we say we do because Tunza has always been doing what it says it does. They know if we say we are going to give others, we are going to do that. So it's a good idea and it's something that I wouldn't mind looking into. Um, I'm sure the, the demand is high everywhere and, and check to see where it's needed the most and then we get it there. It's, it's not a problem. We got a lot of support from this and I believe if we expand it and say, hey, now we're giving everybody who we can help. Please help us give out. People will come forth and contribute. Maybe we can make make Pauline have the hotline. Uh, you know, call Pauline, <laughs> and she can sort you out. It's it's been fun. I really learned a lot. I've never done such a thing in my life. So people just come up with ideas, and then you learn that uh, that small thing you say really makes a big difference. Because I learned a lot, especially from uh, Bridget Sante. She was uh, she was a strong member of the team until she got overwhelmed with the work. So she had to take a break, but I really learned a lot from her. After they graduate from primary school, we offer them to high schools and uh, they, they, they get uh, scholarships. So through scholarships uh, in high school and uh, we want to follow up also through to university. When they go back to, to the villages, it, actually now the circle begins where they give back to the society. I want to say thank you for everyone who donated. There are so many. We have both physical donations and we have those who donated through the M channel. So thank you so much for helping us and we are grateful because you have helped out us. And also us. Uh, yeah, it's a big thank you to everyone who really donated and uh, everyone who shared our posts, everyone who called and texted to say this is the way to go. I really want to give a big thank you to them, to the organizations, uh, to the Kenya Hockey Union. They've been supportive. We are using the facilities. We've been picking parts from here. To the hockey players and hockey fans and their families and to all our friends who have been there. Thank you. It's compassion to humanity. The kids, uh, I'm sure, uh, it will go a long way in making them really also want to give back in future.